2J, you have an ardent following on YouTube. What do you think makes your content so engaging? No one really starts YouTube to say, bam, oh, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. You just start just to make videos for your friends, really. I started making stupid videos just knowing some people on Facebook would see it. I was just making videos just for fun, like I had no money and I was making videos for two years, so it wasn't really a job back then. I think when you start YouTube looking to go into it to make money, it's not, it's not gonna work out because you can tell when you're trying too hard. You just have to start and just see if you're any good. Because when I started, I was terrible. I actually deleted the first few videos I made. They're so bad, I deleted them. So it's something you need to get into and just see if it works for you. A lot of kids today, they jump into YouTube expecting to make money and get lots of views on the very first try. And it doesn't, it really doesn't work like that. Back then, I never really even used to show my face. I used to make parodies, like it was purely about making people just share stupid videos. And then when you realize that it can become a job, you need to try to extend the type of videos you make. I started making vlogs. I started showing my face. The fact that I was getting a lot of positive comments and just kind of made me want to keep going. Because if I weren't getting any views back then, I probably would have stopped. I used to just turn on the camera and just say whatever. And I never used to realize that what I'm saying really affects certain people, either positively or negatively. Like I could just say something stupid. I might be mocking something, but that something means something to someone else. And you start getting comments. You start to realize that you need to be really careful with what you're saying. There comes a point where you realize that half of your viewer base are kids and they really grab onto every little thing you say. So it came to a point where I started writing scripts so I could be more careful with what I'm saying and the amount of things I wanted to say but couldn't. But it was going well, so I never changed the format until like lately I've become just a lot more expressive. I don't really care anymore because you can't please, you can't please anyone, really. I am on myself, but that's the thing with YouTube. You, you can either be yourself and accept all the judgment you get, or you can be the correct influencer, which is what I used to try to be. I've noticed a lot of influencers aren't happy. You see a lot of influencers talk about depression and stuff, because basically every day they need to turn on a camera and be anything apart from themselves. It's like acting, you turn on the camera and you say what people want you to say, and you act the way you think you should act. And it, it doing that for years, it actually starts to drive you crazy. That's the mistake a lot of people make, I think. They, they jump into YouTube thinking they, they should do what makes people happy, but it doesn't make them happy. Most of the time, whatever's trending is very fake and very for the views. At some point, I was getting two, three million views per video. You could say that all the kids were just following the trend, which at that point was me. Like in 2016, I was the, my name was the most Googled name in Greece, but I've dropped because I just, I just got tired of it. It's, it's weird, because you'd think that being popular and making money off what you like doing would just make you happy, but it's, in some weird way, it, it doesn't. I tend to do the opposite of what's trending because it makes me happier. I got into clubs fairly early, at like 14, I was DJing in some of the clubs. And in school, they just started calling me 2J, which doesn't actually mean anything. So when I started YouTube, I just stuck with it because some, some people knew me here and there. So I just kept the name. And like, they always ask me, what does 2J mean? And I've got like the worst answer. It doesn't mean anything, but I, I just kept it. A lot of people meet me up close and they expect me to be this happy guy, this loud guy that I am in my videos, and, and really I'm completely the opposite. I'm quite shy, I'm quite, I'm quite an introvert. If I turn on the camera and just have a conversation with the camera like I'm having with you, it's not as engaging as a YouTube video. I mean, especially today, kids are so used to like TikTok and the quick things. If they put on a YouTube video and they're not happy in the first 10 seconds, they'll go to the next video. That's what it's like today. Which is why I start all my videos like, bang, straight away. That's what you need to do. Webstar, Stamat VMA 2018, 2J. Thank you so much for having me.
Γιατί κάποιοι δεν το θέλανε, προσωπικά πιστεύω είναι καλό για όλο το ελληνικό entertainment. Having built a brand on YouTube, you've established presence on other social media platforms and have even collaborated with renowned Greek music artists, rapping on their music videos. One can only wonder what is next on the cards for 2J. I used to do a couple of things like producing wise, so I was always in the music. So when I started YouTube, I always wanted to show the, you, the music side of things. Like if you look at my whole channel, there are musical bits from early on as well. The song I made with Doors, that came about not because I wanted to make a music video, it's because I wanted to talk about the rap scene today and I wanted to do it in a more musical way. I've done a few songs, but I still don't see myself as a musician. I managed to accumulate so many views because I've got so many videos I'm deep diving into matters that actually matter. Sorry, my, my London accent. Um, so I don't think I've given the right to anyone to come up to me and say, oh, you shouldn't say this. I've got a video on my main channel, a very short, like two minute video, which mocks people that watch gamers. Because back then, it, I thought it was weird that instead of playing games yourself, you're watching other people play games. But you come to realize that a lot of people don't have the money to buy games or don't have the time to play games, so they want to watch other people play games. And it was at that point where YouTube actually said, make longer videos. So it was a good time to create the gaming channel because I was always into gaming anyway. But I tried to have a spin on it of making it as comedic as possible. I could think ahead of what I want to do next year and then the internet will just flip and YouTube will just flip and everything will change. So I don't bother anymore with what I should do. I'm aware that I'll probably stop the YouTube thing soon. And I have no idea what I'm going to do after that. I want people to be able to watch certain videos of mine in 10 years from now and still agree or still like the certain things that I was saying or doing. If I go to any of my videos from five, six, seven years ago, you still see comments today being left because the subjects are very ongoing with today's youth. I'd rather leave a legacy of the, the good things I tried to do on YouTube rather than, oh, he was the funny guy.